Hey, how's it going? So, um, in case you haven't heard, people like to do very complicated and frankly weird things all the time for no reason. It's a thing that we do. Why? I have no idea, but we do it all the time. The latest and perhaps most confusing of the weird things humans have come up with is this thing that's going on right now called Twitch Plays Pokemon. You may have heard of it. I mean, it's on CNN now for Helix's sake. It's kind of fascinating, and I'm really more interested in the implications of this social experiment than the thing itself, but for those not in the know, here's a brief synopsis of what's happening. Basically, what's happened is someone's taken an emulation of the original Pokemon video game and live-streamed it over the website Twitch so that people can watch it. Then they've modded the game so that people watching the stream can control the game from a distance. The way this is done is viewers will type out one of the seven button inputs for the game into the chat box on Twitch, so up, down, left, right, A, B, and start, and then that button will be input into the game. So if only one person was on the stream, they could easily type in every button they want to press and just play Pokemon from a distance. Or that would be the case, except at the time of my recording this, there are currently 75,000 people all watching this thing and inputting buttons at the same time. 75,000 people and sometimes as many as 100,000 people are all trying to play the same video game at once. That's nuts. As you might imagine, it's kind of difficult to get 100,000 people to all coordinate together towards the same end on much of anything. If you just watch for a second here, you can see the character appears to be wandering around aimlessly, and almost every step that is taken is nearly always immediately undone. It's the random nature of the input system. There's so many people all with their own ideas about what to do and how to do it, all vying for the poor soul of this one character. But incredibly, and I'm almost tempted to say miraculously, the players on Twitch have managed to make some incredible progress, including collecting five of the game's gym badges so far. For those who haven't played Pokemon, that's pretty dang impressive. Also, who hasn't played Pokemon? What did you do in middle school? Learn? Anyways, I've been watching this thing pretty obsessively for the past several days, so I thought I'd share with you some of the lessons about human nature I've learned along the way. One, people are hard to control, like incredibly, stupidly hard to control, especially in large numbers. Over the course of this experiment, several modes of putting together plans and disseminating information have been put together. For example, there's a subreddit, a Google Doc, the chat window has been modded so that the commands are filtered out so you can actually read what's going on. There's been a lot of organizational effort put together so that most everyone is roughly on the same page and roughly heading in the right direction. That said, no amount of organizational effort can ever possibly overcome the intrinsic chaos of a large group. There will always be trolls doing the opposite of what's best for no other reason than to watch the world burn or at least to delay other people's fun by a few seconds. However, this leads us to number two. People will inevitably trend towards progress. There will, of course, be many a misstep and catastrophe along the way, but it is human nature to trend towards progress and change. We as humans tend to get bored when things stay the same for too long, and you only need one more person pushing forward than there is pushing back for us to eventually head the right direction. The number of well-intentioned good people in any group will always outweigh the trolls, so the worst someone can do is throw a spanner in the works, but the machine of large groups is programmed to move forward. Number three, actions have delayed consequences and people will never understand that. In the game, there is something like a 20 second delay between the moment you put in your command and the moment it shows up in the game. That may not seem like a lot, but when you're trying to navigate an especially tricky environment, it's almost impossible to get the timing right, especially when, no matter how many times the delay is explained, half the people in the group don't realize it's there. I see this all the time in real life, too, where people expect some action to have immediate effects, when a lot of things don't work that way. The economy doesn't just turn around overnight because someone passed a law, personal success is a process Process, not an event, and just because you put the pizza in the oven doesn't mean it's done. Actions have delayed consequences, but no matter how many times it's explained to us, we will always get frustrated when we don't receive immediate feedback. Why wait for pizza when you can have it now and only slightly frozen? Lesson number four, people will never give up. Never. We are a stupidly determined people, and as humans, doing difficult things is our favorite hobby. At the time of my recording this, the game has been going on for 10 days, and I don't see it stopping anytime soon. It is silly, but there's something sort of beautiful in it. So while the jury is still out on whether an infinite number of monkeys at an infinite number of keyboards could ever produce the collective works of Shakespeare, we've at least proven that those same monkeys at keyboards can at least play a pretty good game of Pokemon. I'll see you next week. I'd be in the corner of the first, and I'd say the most powerful and influential woman pharaoh, Hatshepsut. And I really wasn't aware that restaurants could have sour cream that wasn't, you know, the best, but, you know, the burrito tasted relatively normal.